That, dear viewers, is the sound of your doom. Uh, we're playing... We're bringing back Creeptober. Uh, some people. Not all of us. Just some. But we're bringing it back, because it is October 1st, as you may know. And this is going to scroll really slowly. But I am playing Clock Tower. Now don't worry, all my other projects are still there. It's not like I've abandoned anything. But I'm just doing this because it is October, and October, as the Johnny Cage put it, you are honor-bound to play a scary-themed game. So let's just get this over and done with. I am going to try to get... Uh, if you go to the list here, there's a list of endings there. I'm not going to show them all off. Well, I might if I end up having the time and inclination to and actually figure it out, but I'm going to try to get the quote-unquote best ending, the one that's not in that list ending is. And we're going to start with the opening story. Good old Jennifer, raised in Granite Orphanage. That wonderful creepy music in the background. And her friends. She has three of them. They were... All orphans, and here they are walking. Uh, just, you know, walking in the forest. It's actually like, this is a Super Famicom game. So this is really, like, good. And the lovely lasses are Laura, uh, Jennifer, Lottie, and Anne. Miss Mary is the one who's adopting them. Her name is the lovely Mary Barrows. Now, there's some skerfuffle, because obviously this is translated from Japanese, because this game was never released in America. But there's some, you know, I've read a couple things on it that said, oh, she's not really, you know, adopting them, and she's just bringing them to this guy's house, or it's her house that she's bringing them to, and... I'm just going to run with the fact that it's her house she's bringing them to, because that seems much more funny. In essence, we are going to engage in the deadliest game of hide-and-seek ever. The game actually looks very good for a uh, Famicom game, or a Super Famicom game. Uh, it's a point-and-click game, it's not like Resident Evil, you know, there's no action. Jennifer is not a martial artist. She's not a commando of some kind of army. She is just a girl. And yes, she is intentionally supposed to look like the actress from, I believe, the movie Labyrinth, whose first name is Jennifer and her last name is Escaping Me. It's not Lawrence. But here we have our cursor there. L and R move you in uh, different directions. X makes you stop walking, uh, Y is actions, B is your panic button, which you will need at some point, and A does something, I forget. But we're just going to talk to, what's her face here? That I didn't scroll that text line, that was its own thing. Now, now that's the end of their dialogue, right? It's like, hey, you want to know what kind of guy he is, right? Yes. And then nothing. Let's go talk to uh, Laura. Yeah, well, if you know what goes on here, it'd make you uneasy too. And Lottie is over here. The lovely redhead. A lot of people think that, you know, because the uh, the sprite has, the portrait has short hair and, you know, the sprite is to the back, like, oh, it's a boy. Nope, that's a girl. Okay, now I think to progress you have to talk to her twice. I don't know if you can talk to the other, any of their ones twice. I think it's just Lottie. She's going to say, who want to go find Miss Mary? And, yeah, Jennifer volunteers because the music starts. Just walk towards the, uh, just walk towards the door, and eventually you'll get there. That, uh, what? Can I move? 
What the hell? It was a scream. And somehow, all these people are gone. <laughs> I don't know where they went. Because if you try to go upstairs and walk anywhere, one door you can't open, and the balcony falls down. So where did they go? Nobody knows, but we're going to turn the lights back on. The sad fact of this game is that Jennifer moves really slowly. Like, absurdly slowly. There's no point in going that way. Now you'll notice that she runs, which can, uh, you know, ruin you in a bit because... If, you know, she runs too far, she will lose stamina, which is indicated by the co the background color of her portrait there. You know, blue means she's fine, and it goes to green, brown, eventually red. And the lower it is, the uh, more dangerous she's actually in. So we're going to stop here. I hate how the camera has to catch up. We're going to go into this room. This room is the master bedroom, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... Let this parrot out of his cage. This is very important, even though it doesn't seem like it. Alright, and what we're gonna do is click on this right bed here, and she's gonna take a poke from a parrot and wander back and forth with her hands over her head like, Ugh! I thought you heard that cricket. There's a cricket in my house somewhere, but I can't find him. Jennifer, would you step to it, please? Alright, now Avengers will run over and grab the bed sheet. Wait for the bird to come down, and... There. Now he's covered by the bed. Which you actually need to do, and I will show you why you need to do it in a second there. Uh... Turn the lights off in this room. This you don't actually have to do. I think it, they turn off automatically. But what I want to do is I want to run over here. Exit this room. And continue walking to the left. Huh? What was that? It's like water dripping. It's coming from this room, looks like. Well, this isn't ominous in any way. Now, she's going to close the door. The first thing you want to do to make this easy on yourself is to turn around and go back over this way and attempt to leave. She will open the door and then... There we go. And then click on the shower, because clearly there's something going on in here. Somebody's steaming up. Is that Laura? Or Anne? One of the two? I get them confused all the time. It is Laura. Oh, what were you taking a shower for there? What the? Holy crap of a cracker! That is a midget with a large pair of scissors. I, I'm pressing the button. I want you just to try. run, Jennifer. Run. That would be good. Thank you. Now, this is essentially your antagonist in the game, or at least one of them. You turn. I want to make sure to click on this door. Stop. Go in there. No, go in there. Hide under the bed. This is, a uh, Bobby. Uh, he is your, or your primary antagonist for the most part. He's apparently only nine years old, but he's got a giant pair of gardening shears, and he looks retarded. Now, if you come in here, and you don't uh, put the parrot under this blanket, he will basically give away your spot, and then you will lose this as a hiding point. Now, be very careful. You can click on this mirror, and you can click on the dresser. Do not, under any circumstances, click on the mirror, because it will kill you. What you do want is a small bottle of perfume. Okay, let's actually... You know what? Let's do a save there. 
And then... Or, okay, I guess it... That was weird. Let's do that again. No, okay, that... Well, that's what happens. If you don't hit the uh, panic button, which is B, uh, that will kill you, basically. But I don't want to do that. Not that it affects the ending in any way, it's just... Eh. It's the health I don't want to lose. Now we're in the living room. And you don't have to turn the lights on. I just like to because, you know, why not turn all the lights on you can? Raise the power bill through the roof. Okay. And check this box. You can check the TV too, it doesn't have any power. And the box is empty. Now that box could be empty, it could have a key in it. You can find the key, if, if it's empty, if it's empty, you find the key elsewhere. So we're gonna start heading that way. Now the thing about Bobby is the Bobby is not like the nemesis or anything. He is not randomly walking around and you can run into him. He has specific spawn points that you can essentially you can know where he's going to be. And what we want to do is go upstairs. Obviously the light switch is apparently on the other side of the room, which kind of makes no sense. And we get to watch her walk slowly, slowly up the stairs. Ten years later. All right, let's see if we can go this way. A phone is ringing, but I'm not answering it. Can we go in this door? Okay. Uh, first thing we want to do is go over here. Like a bird nest. Grab the stick. And she will knock it down. That Camp Cricket. Huh, that key is supposed to be up there. I guess not. I don't know why she walked around it the first time. Let's go in here to this room. Can we push this uh, block here? Some rope. Oh, so we came in for the insecticide. Okay, so uh, I guess that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Play Clock Tower. Uh, hopefully, you know, it's there's no music in the game, so it's going to be pretty boring just to listen to nothing. But we're going to continue on through the haunted barrels. Man, well, it's not really haunted. It's kind of just a bunch of 
jerkwads. But so thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support and have a good night.